here we're looking at conophytums, lithops, and a couple of other African plants. Uh, I find them very interesting because they often match the habitat or environment they're in with the colours, apart from the flowers, uh, and they're just really, really interesting plants. Really very. Conophytum have about a hundred different species with hundreds of subspecies and or district locality collection ones which are quite different to the original species and they vary a lot. I've been collecting these now for probably about five or six years putting them all together and I'm still getting more and more all the time. Lapidaria margarete is pretty unusual it's not grown very often. Some of these are considered a little bit hard to grow but in reality they're not that hard. They can take quite a cool winter they can take extremes of heat in summer and just prior to conophytums breaking out of their shells you can actually start to water them and you water them through autumn winter and into spring but you really let them dry out in summer all of these plants need to be treated that way they really like a dry in summer and they can really shrivel up they get all wrinkly but right now when you're looking at these plants they're all really fat and healthy because they're all plumped up full of water I've actually given them a bit of extra food to get good flowering for breeding see down here these are the skins that develop over the top of the conophytums over summer so they just look like little shells and then they crack open and they open up and look like this and in here you can see the residue of some of the old skins that's another example, he's just breaking out now. The flower's even just popping through. See, he just... In another few weeks, he will grow more and he will shed all of those skins. Lithops are a really great genera. There's about 40 to 50 species. And again, with dozens and dozens of subspecies and or varietal collection areas. They also have color variations as a green version of a brown one and things like that and again over here a red version of optica normally optica is a green you know olivey green color but this is a rubra one which is an unusual occurrence in one area this is really highly favored and quite rare then you have unusually a few hybrids and this is called sato's violet and you can see it's a violet color and this, this is a cross between Optica rubra, this one here, and uh, another Luthop, and you get the purple colour. So there is a little bit of crossbreeding going on between a few of them. And I have over here a really unusual one, that pink one there, which is a Sato's Violet Cross as well. And that's a pink one. That's a really unusual one. Okay. Now, see, so you get some other variations too. So, Bromfeldiana, this is the Sulfuria version, which is sort of a yellowy green color, whereas normally it's brown. So people seem to opt for green versions. This is Lithop Vericulosa, really unusual color, very different to a lot of the other ones. And here you have several types of the same species. That shows you the variation. Four different types from different localities. When you do a lithop label, the locality is CO25, which means coal probably collected this and numbered it 025. That is that locality, which makes it different to other localities. Each lithop, even one species, can vary quite dramatically between different areas. So they've given them locality numbers. Conophytums and lithops, they like a lot of light, but they can burn. Last year, I had a bit too much sun coming in here, and some of these conophytums down here burned, and we lost a few. It was just too bright a sunlight. But as you can see, this house is really quite bright and light. In fact, it's actually a bit sunlit, but gentle sunlight. Watering should start in mid-autumn, I feel. Often the bodies, they call lithops bodies, these are bodies, they're often shrunken because of summer and 
about autumn time, they'll get naturally in their own environment in Africa, a little bit of autumn rain. And they're preparing to flower. And they're flowering late, later autumn, mid-autumn to late autumn now. And they will set all the seed pods, will all be set up over before spring, before they settle down for summer. And the seed pods will be ready to pick come summer when they're hardened off. It's a good idea to pick lift up seed pods and cultivitum seed pods before next autumn because any watering the pods can actually open up with the rain the, these are fantastic when the first rain hits these seed pods they open up and the seeds disperse with the splashing rain so you can lose your seed with watering in autumn this is normal potting soil but we've added a little bit of pumice and a bit of extra sand to it so it's got a bit more fine stuff in it. Still really good drainage, but it retains its moisture a little bit better than a succulent mix. So I look after these by more controlling the water rather than having them overly wet. And we do let them dry out before we water them again. This is a friend's mix, this one here. And you see he's used more fine sand in this. And it's about 50% compost and about 50% fine sand and gravel, approximately. But he's got it quite fine because these were for young ones to be potted into. I prefer it a bit coarser for the bigger, older plants. But the inclusion of pumice in your mix is actually a good thing and we've started doing it more lately. There'd be about 30% pumice in there, about 20% sort of coarser sand, then about another 25% potting mix, normal potting mix, and finer sand. Now it's important with lithops and conophytums, they come from a really poor area where there's not a lot of nourishment, there's not a lot of breakdown of organic material, and so what it is, you don't want to overfeed them, or otherwise they can get too big. This is an example of possibly too big. Um, I use just a very small amount of slow release fertilizer and I do like to add a little bit of dolomite to the mix and I, I fertilize these definitely less than other succulents that we grow. Right. These things really need to be potted in autumn, just before the roots start to grow for the season. And again, you can do it mid-winter so that they develop again over for spring, but you don't handle them much in summer. So you generally fertilize when you do a repot or things like that. Big old ones that have been in the pots for a while, you could actually top dress a little bit. You know, just put a little bit around here later on, but don't do much, just a little bit. Because it really is, they really don't need too much food. This is uh, Salicola maculate, which is means it's the green form. What you see here is, you can see the female parts in here on top. That's right. a style and the yellow things around the edge of the stamens. Now already on the petals here, you can see a little bit of pollen has come off. But if you dust this, get a little cloud of pollen, it will cover all the filaments in here of the style or the stamen, and therefore it's pollinated. And I'll come back again and do this one again tomorrow. That one there, again. And he's a bit young, he's a bit early. Probably leave him for another day. Now it's really important, clean your brush really well before you do any other pollinating on any other species. It keeps them separate. Lithops are fundamentally either white or yellow with a couple of variations in between. Whereas con conophytums on the other hand, purple, red, pink, mauve, white, all the rest of it. But these ones here, this is a little bit tight for pollinating yet. Probably this is, bit better yep a little cloud coming off there you sort of got to wait till they're ripe where they opened up a little bit more this one here he was pollinated yesterday or the day before and you can tell the flower is already shrinking up it's getting ready to develop its seed the flowers are inclined to collapse once they have been pollinated these fantastic lithops it's hard to see how colorful they are when the flowers hanging on them you know, beautifully coloured. Now, Leslie Eye is normally a brown one, but this is a green version. This is the yellow form. So let's have a little look here. Yep, you can see little clouds of pollen coming off. It's very ripe. 
ready to go. Just as softly brush it. That's all you need. And again, clean your brush before you touch another species. These are the first lot of seed I got this year. Um, I got from a friend overseas. It's a mixed batch, but I planted it just as autumn, late summer, just as autumn was beginning. And already you can see some of the bodies are starting to come out of the juvenile stage and they're starting to sprout the mature leaves. Right there, mature leaves are just starting. And if you're pretty good, you can actually pick a couple other species. Here's a three, a three one, which is quite rare. All right, and then some other varieties, this is some more recent. This is from my own collection here from last year. I cleaned those ones here. And then down further, this is a collection I bought from an African man. And this is his own personal collection where I got seed. Over nearly a hundred different types, a hundred different versions there. So as you can see, I like lithops and I like collecting them. It's really wonderful seeing all the various forms. So all the plants in here can have the same treatment, same water at the same times of the year. One really fascinating thing about conophytums is the flowers are incredibly variable and different, or even more so than the bodies of the plants. But the pollination of the flowers is entirely different for different species. Many species, they flower during the day such as this one. This would probably have a bee or a butterfly or something like that pollinated because everything is exposed and external. But many conophytums will not open during the day. This is a nighttime flower. This is one of the obcordellum types. This is a highly desirable species. And you can see it's waiting to flower at nighttime. It will open up tonight. And this means it's probably pollinated by a moth. Here are some more. Is it two more nighttime specimens? The one on your left there has already been pollinated. Just so you can see the flowers are disintegrating. This one has yet to be pollinated, but closed during the day. A beautiful daytime flower. And you can see already that some of the pollinations on these are working well. They're swelling. This is blank nothing coming but i'll show you a real one that's pollinated well see the seed body developing in the head of the plant that is well pollinated and going whereas that one is empty nothing there one flower bud still to come and he's still ready to pollinate so yeah very good seed body there this is a mix i've made up for the quality items it just has some basic body mix in there, but it's got fine sand, pumice, and coarse river sand in there. And that's about what it looks like. This was the original body mix I put these kind of items into, and I think it's too loose and too open, too coarse. They had more trouble getting their roots down into it. That's why I've gone over to this finer mix. I think conophytums are really a clumping plant, or they're really a community plant. They really like to be together. So for growing on purposes to get good flowers, healthy breeding, dividing, the whole thing, I think I've put a couple of these little clumps together. And I'll just pack down, keep the clump happy. One potted conophytum UV form in Mecanum. This is obviously a nighttime flower too. Handling these at this time of the year is not a bad idea because they're going to keep growing for quite a while. And if you don't disturb the roots too much, they will go right into this new mix well. Watering in? Yeah, they'll be watered in, definitely. 
well, well watered in with a little bit of fertiliser and a couple of other things. That's all, yeah, just water them in well. So that's it for Lithops, Conophytums and some of the related species. We'd like to thank James Lucas for showing us some of his collection and sharing his knowledge about this interesting group of plants. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more information on a whole range of succulents. Visit the website for more details and as always, good luck with your gardening.